the hat is back, the hat is back, we're feeling autumnal, I feel confident in the hat now. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a video that I'm really excited to film. It's going to be called like cozy coffee shop book recommendations. So one of my favourite favourite things to do especially in the autumn which it is so dark today in the UK like autumn has begun. Look at this autumnal ensemble. <laughs> but it did not give what needed to be gave. Yeah, one of my favorite things to do is go and sit in a coffee shop and read a book. But I love the feeling of just being engrossed in a book in a cozy coffee shop. So I'm gonna give you some book recommendations that I think you need to pick up right now, walk yourself down to a coffee shop, get a coffee, a tea, a hot chocolate, that's my usual order, caramel hot chocolate. Yes. <laughs> and read one of these books, basically. So yeah, that's all this is gonna be. It's also like autumnal recommendations. So books I think are good to read in autumn. And let's just get into it. So the first one you'll know that I absolutely loved if you watched my most recent vlog, which is where Riley Marie picked what I read. I read some of her favorite books. It's They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. So firstly, tell me this cover doesn't make you think of like autumn coffee shop. Oh my God. Oh my God. The image. The fantasy I have of me reading this in a coffee shop is like no other. It's a lot of fantasies. And when I feel the fantasy, it is my reality. So this is about a professor at this university who kills men. She kills rapists, abusers, shitty men, basically. And uh, she's been like framing them as suicides or accidental death. But now people are starting to wonder, is there perhaps a link with all these murders? There's also this other storyline of a young girl who has just joined the university and is kind of trying to figure out her place in this very like college-y kind of atmosphere, right? That those boys operate in. And it was so good. This was five stars. I tell you, there's this twist halfway through that I do not see coming. I mean, I am gullible. I'm gullible. You're stupid. You're not I'm smart. Not stupid. You're not smart. So I often don't guess things correctly. <laughs> but the twist was outstanding. It was such a good twist. It blew my socks off. And it has this very much like autumnal atmosphere to the book. Also, right, also, this is one of the books I've read quickest in a long time. I was reading like 90 pages in half an hour. Like I was absolutely flying through it. So I think that's another thing that helps in like a cozy kind of coffee shop atmosphere. You may not be there very long. So you want a book that flies super duper fast. So that is what this book is. Oh my god. Like, I've never read a book this fast. Genuinely. I was just like flying through it. I had to know what happened. Such a great thriller. Really relevant to today in kind of its attitude towards women and justice for like men's crimes. Also an honourable mention, the best memory I have, this I didn't put this on the list, but <laughs> the best memory I have of reading in a coffee shop is The Kite Runner. When I was like 13, 14, I used to say that was my favourite book and I haven't read it since. I haven't reread it in like eight years. So I feel like I need to do that and see what I think of it now. But I, I remember sitting in this Costa, which if you're from the UK is a superior coffee shop chain. Starbucks isn't cozy. Starbucks isn't cozy, but Costa is. And I was sitting in a Costa and I just devoured the book. And um, I really want to reread it because I haven't read it in ages. Anyway, next recommendation I have for you is Pages and Co. Tilly and the Book Wanderers by Anna James. So this is a middle grade, which I think is another good recommendation because, you know, it's you'll read it fast, right? You will fly through it just because of the nature of the book. Tilly lives above her grandparents' bookshop. One day, her favourite book characters start appearing in the bookshop um, and, like, walking around. She's like, what? <laughs> it's just a very cute, magical, fantasy middle grade. It really brings alive the love of reading and books for kids. I just think it's so like cute and wholesome. I would love to sit with a hot chocolate and a comfy sofa reading this. There's a really nice friendship in this. A lot of classic books that I think a lot of us love from our childhood are explored. I think you know, there's Alice in Wonderland, there's Anne of Green Gables. Those kind of characters appear. I loved Anne of Green Gables when I was like, eight. So yeah, I think this would be another one that uh, would just feel wonderful sitting in that cozy shop and reading it with like a hot chocolate. And then another one which I would recommend, which I have to recommend, I can't not recommend it, is The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss, probably my favourite book. She's an icon, she's a legend, and she is the moment. Now come on now. 
this is, oh my god, the perfect autumnal book. The perfect autumnal book. So in this, we're following daughters and female versions of classic men from Victorian literature. So we've got Mary Jekyll and Diana Hyde. We've got Justine Frankenstein, Catherine Morrow, and Beatrice Rappuccini. And they're this kind of girl gang, but this book is very much them coming together. Sherlock and Watson also play a massive role in this book, but they're kind of perfectly side characters. Sherlock doesn't take over the book like he definitely could. It's set like in Victorian London, there's a mystery going on, there's a murder mystery going on, and it's just told in this fantastic way. Oh my god, the audiobook is incredible, it's on script, I'd really recommend you go and listen to it if you haven't. One of my favourite parts of the book, which I know is like hit or miss for a lot of people, is how Catherine is writing the book, and so the girls will cut in with their thoughts on uh, certain things happening, like part way through the book. Oh, I just love it! It's like this wholesome, cosy, wonderful book. I'm actually about to reread this. I'm gonna reread it with my patrons for my Patreon book club. Um, I have a monthly book club over there and usually they will vote on a round of TBR Cluedo but this month just because of timing they voted on rereading one or rereading one of my favourites so I would reread it. This is what won which I, I was happy about. I kind of wanted this to win. <laughs> Plan succeeded. <laughs> And I'm just so excited. I actually am about to cry. I'm so excited to reread re it. So if you want to read it, come join the Patreon, come join the book club. I'll have a discussion live show. We've got discussions in the Discord and I'll have a reading vlog for it. So yeah, I'll leave the link down below, but it's like the perfect book. And I'm, I'm a little bit scared to reread it because I'm scared it's not going to live up to it for me, but also I'm just so excited. It feels like coming home. Like it's just amazing. I can't re wait to reread this whole series again and again. So maybe I'll have to pop to a coffee shop at some point when I'm rereading this. <laughs> Next recommendation is another kind of murder mystery and it is The Honjin Murders by Shashi Yokomizo. Um, I really like this. It's a super short murder mystery which is why I recommended it. It's only 181 pages so I think you could definitely read this in one sitting in a cozy coffee shop with a cozy drink. This is a locked room murder mystery where this um, husband and wife are killed on their wedding night and it's a locked room so there was snow all around the building they were in, there were no footprints, no way for someone to get in or out so it's like, well, how did someone kill them when there was no way for someone to get in or out of that room? It's set in uh, Japan in 1937. It's the start of a really famous Japanese detective series. I'm excited to read more. Only two have currently been translated into English, but hopefully they will translate more. And yeah, it's a really interesting look at like family and class and societal perceptions and like of yourself and how that matters in this Japanese society and the ending fucking bonkers crazy ending like one of the craziest solutions to a murder mystery I've ever read I'm still I still don't really understand it don't really understand how that happened um that does make no sense but I think this is just like a very exciting book to get through it's super short so I could just imagine myself in a comfy chair with my hot chocolate reading this book. Next I'm only going to mention this quickly because it is such a well-loved book but a book I think would be perfect for this is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I'm not going to stop for long because we all know how amazing it is but sometimes I feel like I don't speak about these books that are popular but I love them so like I should speak about them. I'm gonna well I haven't got plans to but I do want to reread this soon with the audiobook and the physical book together if you don't know don't know how you don't know but this is about her Daisy Jones and the Six this kind of band in the 1970s and it's told in interview format so it's literally just all the different characters narrating the story and it's very interesting. I cried I cried at a certain part of this like halfway through and it still gets me but it's just a really interesting like character relationships I love how it was told I love books that are told in different ways if you haven't read this yet get yourself down to you know a fucking Costa or independent coffee shop and um get yourself reading this because it is just oh such a cozy wonderful exciting book that you will read fast just because of the nature of how it's told in that interview format. Next a controversial one because I know not a lot of people like it but I loved it is Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. Number one please judge me. Number two please hate me because number three I love it. What a perfect book in my opinion. Everyone else hates it, but I loved it. So this is about um, Inez. Go to this school called Catherine House. You go for three years and you are not allowed any contact with the outside world during your time there. You're there for the whole three years. You're not allowed phone calls with people. Um, you know, you're not allowed letters, you're not allowed anything. And it's like a certain cultish vibe around the school. And it's kind of just this mystery, but for a lot of the book, Inez is kind of like, 
I ain't interested. I'm not bothering with that. That's not my problem. I'm not getting involved. I'm here to enjoy myself, GC style. Do you know what I mean? You know, she's kind of a character who is like, I'm gonna keep myself to myself and I'm not get, gonna get involved in this sketchy shit. It's weird, like it's a hella weird book. You don't know what is going on for half of this. You know, it's very confusing. The whole book doesn't really make sense, but I loved it. I think it's such a captivating, engrossing, claustrophobic read. I absolutely adored it. Don't be scared off by all the bad reviews. You may hate it. Like, I think it's a book to go into with not much expectation because so many people dislike this book. I don't understand it personally. I loved it. It was a five star. And then the last autumnal cafe kind of read that I have for you is Circus of Wonders by Elizabeth McNeil. This is um, again set like in Victorian London. I think that the Victorian era for me is like a very autumnal vibe. It's about this girl who has kind of like birthmarks or like markings on her skin. So she's been very much like isolated because of that. And she is kidnapped and put into the Circus of Wonders. And I thought this book was wonderful for at exposing the harmful and negative and abusive side of these circuses. You know, we've seen films like The Greatest Showman where like P.T. Barnum is idolised. That man, mm -mm. <laughs> he wasn't a good man. And this book kind of shows the ugly side of those circuses and shows how abuse happened and um, these people were taken advantage of. It wasn't everything I wanted it to be. I think I gave it like a 3.5, but I think this kind of atmosphere, this kind of like circus, I could just imagine myself with my hot chocolate, like I've said, sitting in that cafe, the vibes, the vibes are perfect. So there we have it. That is all the books I'd recommend for autumnal reads or like, coffee, coffee cafe, coffee shop reads. Um, let me know if you've read any of these, what you thought of them. Also let me know any recommendations you have for me. Um, that would be perfect to go and read with my hot chocolate <laughs> in a Costa. <laughs> Um, I would love to know and if you've gotten to the end of the video yeah. comment the circus tent emoji down below and yeah I will see you very soon in another video. Bye!